Hi, welcome back. This is part five of hand laying O-scale track. Continuing on with our number eight turnout here. Again, just to quickly recap, what we've done previously is we placed our stock rail here as well as our guard rail for this side. Um, it's all spiked in again, pretty much all the way down to where the uh, closure rail is just about to meet uh, the stock rail here. At that point, we're going to be transitioning to those larger tie plates. So I stopped at that point with these. Um, now, for the sake of time, uh, I did go ahead and attach power feeder to this rail. I also went ahead and got my number eight frog here. If you notice what I've done, is I've gone in and already just attached my insulated uh, rail joiners here. Again, these are just the ones we're gluing on. Uh, again, for the sake of time, uh, I went ahead and did that. Uh, what we're going to be doing now is placing the frog, uh, connecting some more of the rail here, as well as soldering on a feeder to the bottom of our frog here, uh, should the need arise down the road for me to power the frog. Um, at this point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attach that feeder, but I'm going to leave it uh, electrically dead, so to speak. I'm not going to connect it unless I need to. Um, and again, these rail joiners here are going to also allow me the ability uh, to isolate this frog electrically so we can avoid shorts and so forth and uh, make it a DC, DCC friendly turnout. Um, how am I positioning my frog and so forth? Well, again, I'm using these uh, printable uh, templates, uh, like I said, from Fast Tracks. Um, they work wonderfully. Uh, I found that they're a little bit off. Uh, you know, they're not quite to scale. Uh, so you got to kind of. He comes out to be a good, a really good ballpark reference. Um, or again, maybe some of you are, are using their jigs or something like that, or made a jig of your own. That'll work very well. For me, though, uh, I guess if you want to call it maybe cheating a little bit, I'm, I'm working off one of their, their templates, like I said. Simplifies things, makes it nice and quick. I've also gone ahead and cut the sections of rail we're going to need continuing off the frog uh, for the, for the uh, route proceeding straight ahead into the staging track as well as for this rail here off uh, the diverging route. What I'm going to do now is just loosely fit everything together here. I want to do that so I can kind of just position it in the general area because I want to determine where I need to drill my hole for my power feeder. Because um, I'm going to go ahead and attach it because needless to say if I decide down the road that I do need to power it. Um, I'm going to be really hard pressed to get a feeder attached to it and keep it out of sight. Okay, so now I've got everything kind of dry fit in there. Okay, obviously as you can tell nothing's really hard down at all. Um, I'm going to want to solder to the fattest part on the underside of my uh, my frog here, which will be this area right here. Um, so that said, I'm just going to go ahead and make a little mark on top of here so I know that's where I want to solder. It's probably not showing up on camera very well, but I can see it okay. And then I'm also going to um, mark directly underneath where I want to drill my hole, which is going to be right in here. Um, that's where I'm going to be drilling a hole again to put the wire through my, uh, my road bed and so forth. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and Get a drill ready to go, and we'll go ahead and take care of that and move on to soldering the feeder. Okay, we're back. Frog. Reposition the camera, transfer my line from the top of my frog to the base of my frog here, where I'm going to attach my drop. What I'm going to do now is take my Dremel tool, again, just equipped with a fiberglass reinforced cutoff wheel. I'm just going to gently rough up the surface here and clean up the surface so we get good contact when we solder. Okay, there we go. Just again, get the surface good and roughed up, make a nice place to attach things. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do now, is I'm going to go ahead and actually go ahead and put a little solder to the base of this, put a little bit of heat into it, which will help when I go to uh, attach my uh, wire to it and make the process go a little quicker. I like to put a generous amount on the base. Okay, you can almost see it just kind of soaking right into those grooves we cut. Again, key to this is make sure you put, you put good heat to it. That you've got a good clean surface to work with. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tin the wire real quick. Again, tinning the wire. We're just putting some heat to it before we attempt to make the connection putting some solder into it. 
Okay, and all that's going to do, again, is make a quicker connection for us. I am uh, freehanding this, as you can all probably see there. Normally I put it actually in a little vise I have down here just because it gives me the extra set of hands that I don't have. Okay, it's all good. It's all set that way. What I'm going to do here now is go ahead and make my connection. Try and do this in such a way so that you can at least see it. Okay. Go ahead and put the heat to everything, to the wire, to the rail, or to the base of the frog, I should say. Now again, with everything being soldered already, or tinned, what's going to happen here is we're going to end up getting a relatively fast, solid connection. Let that cool for a moment. Okay, and then we've got a good, good solid connection there. My hand probably just blocked that in the video there. I apologize for that, but it's basic soldering 101 there. Uh, so that said, I'm going to clean up a few tools and we'll continue on this place okay, frog. Uh, what I've gone ahead and done uh, again was it's a little off the mark with the hole I drilled for the drop off of my frog. So I had to kind of widen it out a little bit and tweak it a little bit, if you will. Um, which just goes to show, you know, it's it's not always going to go in perfect the first time. You're going to have to have a little trial and error there. I wasn't off by much, but it was enough that it was causing the uh, the frog itself to not want to sit flat and sit flush on the surface of my ties. So I had to make a few relief cuts in these in this tie as well as this one, and then I just came back with a paint pen and darkened it up so it wouldn't stick out so uh, so obviously to the eye. Um, go ahead and just feed my wire, my drop in. I get my rails that I pre-cut already. Again, I'm just I'm putting these in here loose. I'm not gluing these. These are all going to be relying on these rail joiners and the spikes. Uh, reason for that is, is I need a little bit more time to finagle the parts in here. But you know what? Um, these rail joiners and so forth, uh, they're plastic. They're very forgiving. Um, they're not going to just break on you terribly easily, okay? I'm having to work this a little bit, but it's okay. It's what we got to do, so. Okay. I'm in place loosely. What I'm going to do uh, right now is just get a ballpark on the track gauge itself. S see where I'm sitting at here. Um, you know, because right now, like I said, we're, we're, we're just eyeballing things. There aren't any spikes being driven yet. Everything is staying nice and loose for the moment. That's actually really pretty darn close. Um, what I'm going to do here uh, is utilize uh, these larger tie plates again, these, these large ones. And again, if you don't want to buy these and you, and you want to incorporate the detail, you could, you know, buy some styrene and cut your own. It'll work very well, too. Um, Another thing I'm going to be talking about very quickly here is these two sections of rail, you probably noticed they're stuck in between some insulated rail joiners, so how are we going to get some power to these? These are so small, and the way I went about doing this, it would just be a bit of a pain for me. I'm actually going to come back in later, drill my holes, I'm going to attach my feeders on the insides of these rails so you won't see them from the aisle. I'm going to do it very low on the base of the rail and I'll be able to come in and weather that up and cover it up with some ballast and, and you'll never see it. Um, so that what we will do later, so uh, in case some of you are wondering that that was intentional. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to start by putting in a tie plate towards the back of the frog here. I want to start from the rear of this because what it will allow me to do, pardon my hand being in the way there, just doing the same thing, we're just going to slide them under. What this is going to allow me to do is once I get this spike down in the rear, it's still going to allow me to move the front around. I'll still have some play up here to, to tweak with the gauge if there's any issues. Um, so that said, I'm going to go ahead and get everything loosely where I want it right here with this plate. And again, this takes a few moments of finagling, but. Okay, let's 
pretty doggone close right there, but I'm going to check my gauge right up the very back of the frog. It's a little wide. So I'm going to come in with it. Okay. It's pretty good. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on it. I'll move my tie plate back in. It's like I said in the other video, okay, if you don't get it right the first time, don't panic. If you got to pull a few spikes and nudge things around a bit, then that is just what you got to do. The hardest part of this is obviously right here in the beginning because everything is loose. Okay, all I'm doing is just checking my gauge right there. It's good. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I know the tie plate is in a good spot, is the same thing I did on the guardrails. I'm going to spike that tie plate down first. I don't care if the frog moves at this point. I want to get some spikes into that tie plate. That reduces the things that can move on me by one. It evens up the odds a little bit. Okay, that's in. If you notice, uh, like I said, the frog is still loose. Now is where we're, we're going to have to try to really take our time here. I like to get a spike ready to go ahead of time. Come back in with my track gauge. I'll double check the gauge again off this frog. Put the opposite side of the rail there. The uh, stock rail, rather. My apologies. That's good. I like where it's at. I'm going to go ahead. Drive a spike in on this side. I'm going to drive it down, but it's loose. It's not all the way uh, inserted yet. Get one for the other side. And yep, one more time. I'm going to check the gauge. Make sure nothing moved on me. Okay, I'm okay with that. I'm going to drive the opposing spike in here. Again, just till it makes contact. Now I'm going to come back, put a little pressure on it. Okay. I'm going to check it with my gauge again. If it needs a little persuading, then that's what we'll do. Okay, that's very good right there. Now if you notice up in the front what I was talking about, is if I need to move things a little bit, you see, I don't know if you can see that if it's showing up on there, but I can move it. The back's not moving, but the front is. The next thing I'm going to attack uh, for lack of a better term, it's the front of the frog. I go ahead and get a uh, another long tie plate. Again, we're just going to get it under there to uh, into position, and then we're going to repeat that process. I'm going to spike this tie plate down first, so that won't move on me. Then we'll go after the frog. Now, again, this might you know look a little intimidating at first. And you know what, believe me, at first, the first turnout you do, I'm telling you, it, it is. It's, it's kind, of a, kind of an intimidating thing, you know. It's like getting a model, you know. You're excited at the store as a kid, then you open it up and there's 5,000 parts in there. And you already told Dad that you could do it. Okay, again, I'm loosely in position there. I'm just going to very gently and quickly... Not quick as in rushing, but just check the gauge of my track. Okay. I gotta come over with my tie plate a little bit. I'm fairly confident that that's gonna be a good location for that. I'm gonna go ahead and spike my tie plate down again. Again, reducing the amount of things that can move around on me. Okay. Okay, so if you see there, we've got our frog position now. And uh, we're ready to uh, continue with the spiking throughout the, the, the rest of the frog here. Uh, so that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue inserting those long flat tie plates on, on, on every tie here through the rest of the way through the frog. I'm going to insert my regular standard size tie plates underneath these rails. 
we'll make sure this is engaged and everything's all spiked up. And when we come back, I'll show you what that looks like. Again, it's just going to be repeating the same thing you were just seeing me do here. And again, we're just going to keep coming back to it, checking our gauge, making sure everything's all right. So that's that's what we're going to do. And when we return, uh, that'll all be okay. Hi, we're back. As you can see here, I continued on with the spiking of the frog. This frog is in place now. It's been spiked in every location. Um, these little stub rails in here, if you will, they've been spiked and gauged in the location. I've just left a couple of tie plates out here for when I solder on my feeders I mentioned earlier. I'm going to take care of that at a little bit of a later point. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about very quickly here, uh, again, I, I loosely, when I position this frog here, I was going off of two things, one of which I mentioned, the other one I didn't. The one I mentioned was the track templates you could print out from Fast Track's website. Um, again, it, it'll get you close, it's not exact. Um, if you really want to work off some really good solid measurements, you could go to the NMRA's website, uh, I believe it's nmra.org. Um, you could go into, uh, if you do a search for turnouts, you could go and look for, I believe it'll come up as RP-12.1, uh, I believe it is, and it'll be uh, turnout dimensions. What that is, is that'll give you all the various dimensions, uh, according to the NMRA, how they've got things figured out. Good simple one to work off of to position your frog. If you're really trying to determine that, and I'll open up to a different shot here in just a moment, is you can actually measure from the from, from the switch point, the tip of that point, okay, all the way all the way back down to you get to the point of the frog right here, okay. That's what's uh, referred to as the lead, okay. They've got measurements there for that. A lead for a number eight coming back to here is 17 inches and five sixteenths, okay. Um, I had to tweak mine a little bit when I positioned this. Reason is, is these staging tracks I've got here, I've got them coming in at a bit of an awkward angle, really, uh, to this frog. Um, there's a little bit of fudge factor with these turnouts, uh, with these frogs, where you can move them just a little bit without really compromising um, the, uh, the reliability of, of the rail and so forth. I actually had to move mine, I had to move mine uh, further uh, up, if you will, further in this direction slightly. Um, I had to move mine up about um, four to five sixteenths of an inch, actually. Um, but if you want to, you know, go by the golden rule and go by what the NMRA has listed, that's the dimension you could follow, okay? Again, I'm going to reposition the camera momentarily. I'm going to show you how that kind of would measure out so you could get a visual on that. But again, um, go to their website, check out that... Um, uh, that uh, file I mentioned. Again, just do a search under turnouts and it'll come up with probably six or different uh, sections there. Just go to the one for O scale and you can view that. It has all the dimensions, I believe, for a number six all the way through a ten, I believe, uh, in turnout dimensions. Um, so let me go ahead, put the camera down at a different angle here, and I'll show you what that dimension's referring to. Okay, we're back. I repositioned the camera to give you a better vantage point. What I wanted to show you here, let's give you a visual about what I was referring to about those NMRA standards. I went and positioned one of my switch points that I'm going to be using on this number eight. Got it in position at where its final resting place is going to be. What they're talking about is if you measure from the tip of the point, the very front tip of that point, all the way back down, and again in my case it's 17 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. We continue down. That, that is where the point of your frog should be. Okay. That's what they're referring to, that, and they call again. They call that the lead. All right. Now that lead measurement, quite frankly, when you're working on a straight turnout, not a curved turnout or anything, is the simplest measurement to work off of. Okay. Whether you're using a precast frog, whether you're making your own and filing your own, it's the simplest way to do this. Okay. Again, I had to fudge mine a little bit. I had to move it down uh, in this direction again uh, to accommodate. These lead tracks, these storage tracks, rather, that I've got from my coaling facility. Again, there is a little bit of fudging involved here with these frogs. You, you, can, you can move it a little bit, a little bit out of spec, if you will, without compromising any reliability issues. Um, I've done that. It's, it's going to work fine. I've done it in another location and tested it. It, it works out okay. Um, so again, between the track templates and as NMRA measurements, those are your two best bets into, posi into positioning your frog. So I'm sure. And again, I apologize for not mentioning it earlier, but I'm sure some of you were thinking, well, what if I want to start by positioning my frog first and I don't want to start by positioning a stock rail? 
you could do that. As long as you know where your switch points are going to end at, whether you're using cast or whether you're using a one-piece uh, closure rail that you file down and, and make your own points, as long as you know where the tip of that switch point is, you can measure back whatever your measurement is for your given number of turnout, and that'll show you where the point of that frog should be. So that'll, that, that'll get you set right there. Uh, with that said, I'm going to take the camera down and bring it over. Apologize, it's not going to be obviously as steady on the tripod here, but bear with me. I just want you want to give you guys a bit of a better look here. I'm going to come down. All right, and again, here's the switch point in its location, okay, where it's finally going to end up. And again, you want to measure from the tip of your point, okay, and you want to continue that all the way back down until you get to the point of the frog which again is this portion right here, the point of your frog, right in there. That should be 17 and 5 sixteenths of an inch away from the tip of those points. If I was going exactly by that number, again, I, f I moved mine down a couple of few sixteenths of an inch to accommodate my needs. Um, take you up over the top here. Okay, that's what I've had to do there. But that, that's what that measurement is. That's what that would refer to. It's another great way to position your frog if you want to start with your frog first. I just like using the stock rail as a starting point. What you want to do might differ. At this point, uh, again, this video is long enough. I just, for the life of me, cannot figure out how to film these and make them any shorter, so I apologize for that. But uh, that's where we're going to conclude this video. Uh, the next part will uh, we will continue on uh, with laying the other stock rails, our closure rails, and uh, installing the points and so forth.